Okay, hi, my name is Macy Egbert. I am a coordinator at Sadie Rec. I'm over girls soccer and I'll let Laura introduce herself. Um, I'm Laura and I am over boys soccer. So we are, we are the soccer coordinators to chat with. This is the fall 2022 soccer coaches meeting. So you are here if you are either an assistant coach or a coach. Um, yeah. Um, if you have questions, everyone is muted right now. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end. So please hold and or go ahead and put them in the chat. Kevin will um, reply to questions as he is able. <coughs> um, yeah. And uh, let's just let's just get going. Okay. So here's what we're gonna go through really quick. Um, we'll go through all the content. Um, we can send out the slides after the meeting, and then we will go. Um, we'll go from there, and you guys can give us questions. Hit us with questions after. So background checks and child protection training. Last Friday, every one of you, if you've signed up since then, you should have gotten it today, um, but um, every one of you should have gotten an email. You are, um, every coach, every assistant coach, everyone helping out needs to do a child protection acknowledgement form, um, which is essentially a signed PDF that you email back to us um, saying, I accept the city's child protection policy. Um, the child protection training and quiz. You would have gotten, um, <coughs> you would have gotten an email from Jay Merritt at sandy.utah.gov, um, and you need to complete your own child protection training on your own link. So um, you need to make sure that you do your own link. You can't share links because it your link is unique to you and it won't record that you have done it unless you do it from your link. If you need that link resent, that is fine. Please email us. We cannot um, resend from the chat. Um, so don't put your email in the chat. Just email us and we'll be able to resend it to you if needed. Be sure to check your junk mail um, and the background check. The background check is also in the email that was sent on Friday. Um, and there's two separate links for the background check. One, if you've been a coach in the last three years. Two, if you have not been a coach in the last three years, there's a different background check. So make sure you do it. Last thing on the child protection training and quiz. Many of you have coached with us for many years. If you did it last fall, as in fall of 21, you need to do the child protection training and quiz again. Unfortunately, they expire after a year, so you have to do it again. So make sure you do it. Okay, Laura. Okay, we'll quickly go over weather because there is some changes, um, not to lightning. That policy has not changed. Um, we you know, have that. We kind of wait it out at first, and then we can make a decision on canceling. Um, but if we do end up canceling and having rainouts, you will need to have our Sandy Rec app downloaded. Um, a little on later in the slideshow, we'll have like QR codes that you guys can scan to take you to the app store to download it. Um, but that is how we're sending out all weather related notifications. So download the Sandy Rec app, subscribe to soccer and make sure your notifications are turned on. And anytime there's a rain out, you'll instantly get that push notification. So there is no more rain out hotline dialing in it's all through the app so make sure you have that downloaded and send and i mean we've emailed this to all participants as well but we'll email it again and please encourage your team to do it um concussion policy Everyone who has registered has um, agreed to this, but just as a reminder, if someone is thought to have had a concussion or suspected of having a concussion, they need to have a 
doctor's note releasing them to be able to play again submitted to the office, not to the field, only to the office and um, before they can play again. All right, so this is kind of the biggest basics of what you guys need to know as coaches. So our season officially begins on Saturday, August 20th. Um, please contact your players by this coming Monday. Um, we won't have games on the week of Labor Day. Um, practices are set up by the coaches. Um, we say take whatever green space you can. We don't reserve fields, so it's practices or first come, first serve. And you guys as coaches get to set up those days, times, locations, whatever works best for you guys, you get to uh, determine. Um, during the games, there should only be two coaches on the sideline directing players. Um, everyone else needs to stand back and not be yelling to the players or the rest. Um, pictures are part of our fees and our picture day will be on Saturday, August 27th. So that first one, it comes up really fast. Um, and then the weekday leagues, the pictures will be on September 19th and 20th, and we'll have a makeup day if needed on Saturday, September 17th at Lone Peak Park. Um, on the rosters that you guys will get, it will have the emergency contact information um, and medical information, if any. And so this is something that you need to carry with you to practices and games, just in case someone does get hurt, there's an emergency, parents not there, you have that information that you can call them. Um, so please make sure you have that with you. Um, every location where we have games does have site supervisors. If at any time you have questions or need help, they are there. Um, they all will have staff shirts on, shouldn't be able to miss them. Um, so grab anyone in a staff shirt and they can, they can help you. Um, we're going to go over sportsmanship a little bit more in depth later on, but just keep in mind that this is a recreation league. Um, they are not being scouted. So we expect you as coaches and the parents on the sidelines to follow our sportsmanship rules. Uh, last thing, we need each team to set up on opposite sides of the field, um, and no one should be set up along the goal line. So home team takes the north or east side, and the away team takes, takes the south or the west side. Okay, so here's some of the coach guidelines. Um, I mean... Essentially what this is, you guys will get a lot of the physical and uh, contacts or um, abuse in the child protection training. Um, but essentially what we're looking at here is you need to recognize the impact that you have as a coach. Now that impact is for good or for bad, and that is up to you as the coach. So please choose to have a good impact. Um, you know, don't physically touch your players. Um, high fives are okay. But other than that, you don't need to touch them. We don't have tolerance for bullying or abuse in physically or verbally. Um, be aware of the language that you use around kids um, and your tone, even being um, really loud or having a really negative tone. Um, affects the communication that you are communicating. So um, you can choose whether you have a positive impact or a negative impact. And um, I hope that everyone will choose to have a positive impact. Um, that's what we want out of our experience for all of our players is we are here to create a positive playing environment for all kids. And um, that's the whole point of soccer for us. Okay, we're going to go over sportsmanship a little bit more here. Um, and we're making a few changes this season. So, and you will be held to this, so pay attention. Um, we'll just kind of go through this. Coaches and parents should be a role model uh, to spectators, to the kids playing, to bystanders just walking by, to everybody around. Um, 
We promote sportsmanship and teamwork and respect and positivity and kindness to all. Um, we're going to watch this quick video um, made by I Love to Watch You Play. If I can get it up, that's debatable. Okay, Laura, keep chatting and Kev can send me the video. Okay. Um, with that, the coach is responsible for what happens on your sideline, on your team, um, with your parents, the assistant coaches, spectators before, during, and after the game. Um, as a coach, you should be making all and any attempts to quiet abusive or taunting spectators before we take action. So um, with that, all decisions of our officials are final, even if they're wrong. So it just kind of is what it is. Accept it, know that it's rec sports and the, de the decision by the referee is final. They're not going to change it based on you arguing about it. Um, only the coach can discuss this with the ref in a non-confrontational manner. Do you want, do you have it? You know, we're really trying. <gasps> Guys, I think it worked. Can you see it? No. Okay, let me just reshare so that everyone can see it. Ah, not this one. Thought I had it. There you go. Can you see it now? Yes. Yay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I prefer that my parents, if I play bad, don't say anything. And if I play well, it doesn't really matter if they compliment me on how I play. I just like, I don't know. I prefer my parents to not talk as much. <laughs> I can hear them like cheering me on and I'm like thinking my head. Just shut it. I'm trying to focus. My mom yells in Spanish. Like, go, go, go! My mom just says, use the backboard. He said, use the backboard. I get angry because it, it annoys me. I'm kind of embarrassed. She tells me to get in the position that my coach told me not to get in. I'm like, well, no. And then she's like, get in your position. I'm like, no. I get a little tense when I have a certain score to get. And she's like, you've got to get that whatever score. And I'm like, ah. I don't like it when uh, they try to push me even more, even though I'm trying really, really hard. Coming from the coach's mouth is kind of better, I feel like, because your parents are there to support you and your coach is there to help you, you know? You just start screaming, but you know, run faster, make a basket. But, <laughs> but I just start going slower. Every time when she says that, the other people were like, wow, that mom is like really wanting her kid to win. In, in my inside, you can't see it, but I'm in, inside saying, quiet, be quiet, be quiet. 
sometimes I just look into space. Try to listen to them and then do what they say to like, so they don't start yelling again. I don't really want them to give me that much advice because then I might forget it all. Sometimes I get nervous when they yell and nobody else is yelling. Sometimes it can embarrass me. Like, a lot. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Um, <laughs> we're just trying to do this, but you want us to try harder? Well, I am. I'm not going into a game not trying my hardest. That'd be, like, messed up. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Sometimes when you try to get the ball in basketball, it, it kind of... You kind of think in your head that they're kind of, like, going to push you and you're going to fall and hurt yourself. They don't need to, like, always be, like, telling me what to do, like, every minute of the game. They kind of just got to let me play. I love when you say it, like, really nice. I got it, Mom. <laughs> I'd like to look back and I'd like to see you, like, smile or, like, give me a thumbs up. Mom, I wish you would be a little bit quieter. Say, so like, you play good and, like, you probably, you can get them next time. When they smile and say, like, good job. Well, and Dad, thank you for loving me. I love being my supporter. When I'm upset, my mom and dad cheer me up. Sometimes I forget about all the work that they do for me. Be my biggest fan. We need a lot of love. I want you to know I need big hugs. I love the snacks that you bring me. It makes me happy when you always encourage me. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Please just be my Mom and Dad. Yep, that's it. Okay, so while we get back to the PowerPoint, um, we send you guys this PowerPoint um, presentation and we highly encourage you take that link and send it to the parents on your team um, so that they can all watch it and remember what they're really here for um, and what we're really doing here. Um, so like we were saying, the coach is the only one that can talk to the refs. Um, if parents are yelling at our refs, they will get a warning. Um, if they are, like it says below, uh, if they show inappropriate behavior, disrespect, dissent, or violence by word or action towards another player, coach, referee, parent, or spectator, they can get a warning. Um, obviously, this includes abusive language, yelling, screaming, degrading another individual. And we count degrading as telling our refs that they're bad and that they're wrong and that they're not good. Um, this is ref abuse and we won't, we have a zero tolerance policy for it. So our ref will give a warning to you as the coach if parents are yelling on your team and they'll let you know, hey coach, your sideline is, is a little too loud. And if it happens again, like, so from that point, it is the coach's job to talk to their sideline and make sure that, hey, we don't need this, like they're all right, like it's okay. If it continues to happen after that, the refs will leave the field and it will be the coach's responsibility to ref the remainder of the game. Um, I know we might have some questions on that going forward, but this is the policy that we will be standing by. Um, and we plan to stick by it for all soccer seasons going forward. And junior jazz. And junior jazz. Okay, so you are going to get in a PDF form, like a whole big rule packet for soccer, but here's kind of a condensed version. So you can see a snapshot of what, um, <clears throat> of what we've got going for different levels. Um, we, um, 
right now have referees for U11 and up. We are working on getting referees for U9 as well. Um, currently, um, we don't have that. If anyone's interested, we're always hiring. Um, we hire 14 years old and up. We have grandparents who work for us and parents who work for us and 14 year olds who work for us. So we've got a wide range. Um, people are welcome to apply and um, help out. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are with refs. But so far we have refs for U11, U13 and U16, but knock on wood, I don't wanna jinx it. Okay, so just going over some of these things really quick. Um, like we mentioned with that roster, it has emergency contact information and medical information. Carry it with you. Um, do not copy or distribute the roster to the parents on your team. The roster is for coaches and coaches only just because it does have that sensitive information. And because you've gone through that training and we've trusted you with that, it will just be for coaches. Um, but please do share the schedule um, to the parents on your team. So you keep roster, you share schedule. Um, again, please contact them by Monday, August 15th. Our gear pickup will start tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at our offices, and we will give you that address. Um, and that you can only pick up those that gear and those jerseys if you have that child protection training background check and PDF handed in. So just a reminder, these are the requirements to be able to pick up your jerseys and gear. This child protection PDF needs to be signed and emailed back to us or printed, signed, and turned in at our office. The child protection training and quiz need to be completed by your unique link. You cannot complete it on someone else's link. And the background check also needs to com be completed that those links are in the email that was sent on Friday. And just kind of how that mentioned, like when, once all those things are completed, you can come in and get like your gear and the jerseys. Um, but remember that we have around 200 coaches. So we work on sending out those rosters and schedules to each of you. Um, so if you come in and you're like, Hey, I have my stuff. Where's my stuff. Where's my roster and my schedule. Just know that you will get it. We are working through it. So we'll get it to you by the end of that day. Um, so Bear with us on that. Um, for uniforms, we do have goalkeeper, goalkeeper jerseys. We use them from previous seasons. So just, we and we have them at our office when you pick up your team jerseys. So grab one of a different color from what you have for this season. Um, and that can be your goalie jersey. Um, as always, please hand out the jerseys according to size, not the kid's favorite number. Um, cause we don't want to have a mess where we need to trade out a bunch of jerseys, um, for equipment, shin guards are required for every single player. Um, and we only have approved soccer cleats or gym shoes. They have to be plastic. No metal cleats are allowed. Um, we do provide gear bags for you guys as coaches that have balls and cones in them, and they will be collected on your last game. You can just leave them at the field and we hope that you really do please leave them at the fields because we're starting not to get a lot of them returned and we're going to have to do something about that. So please leave them at your last game. Okay, here's the app. Feel free to scan this QR code. We've um, It's in the Apple App Store as well as on Google Play. Um, so this is what we're using for rainouts, for registration dates, upcoming programs, but you will only get notifications for things that you say you're interested in. So if you're like, I'm only a soccer person, great, you're going to get the soccer rainouts, you're going to get the soccer registration dates, the end. If you're also interested in, say, the 5Ks, then you can add that as well, but that is up to you. So you can decide how you want to receive that information. Um, but please download this. This is how rainouts will be uh, communicated. 
And like Macy said, we are hiring. Um, we are always bringing on new staff. We have a lot of fun programs. We've started new programs this year. We have a new schedule, keeping them busy throughout the year. So there's something going on year round um, that they can be involved in. We start hiring at 14. And like she said, we've got staff in their 80s. So if you want a little something extra, we've got that too. And just wanted to emphasize, thank you so much for coaching. Like we, this is our full-time job. This is what we do, but without coaches, like soccer wouldn't happen. So thank you for coaching. Thank you for being willing um, to be a good influence in these kids' lives and just making it happen. Um, here are our emails. Um, I'm again, my name is Macy. I'm with Girls Soccer and Laura is with Boy Soccer. So feel free. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and uh, looks like we've got a hand. Cody, what's your question? Sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand. I tapped that accidentally. Sorry. No worries. Okay, feel free to raise your hand if you have questions. If you don't have questions, you're good to go. Thank you for being here. Um, and get those things done. If your question is, have I completed all my things? Email us. We don't have the ability to look that up right now. So feel free to email us if you're curious about that. But if you've done all three, then you're good to go. Come in tomorrow at nine. Okay, Ashley, what's your question? Uh, hey, what was the third one that you said that we had to do? So child protection PDF yep. needs to be signed and emailed back. Um, the training link will come in a separate email from jmara at sandy.utah.gov. And mm -hmm. the third thing is the background check, which links are in the email. In the email, okay. Cause I got the, the first email, I saw the um, background check. Okay, so that was that one. Okay, good, sorry, I think I'm good. Awesome, thanks. Okay, Lance, what do you have for us? So will we get our roster along with all the other gear when we come in? So you will get your roster and your schedule um, at the end of the day. Again, by the end of the day, by the end of the day. We're so basically like on Tuesday, everyone who's completed all three things by the end of Tuesday, we are going to email everyone who's done that. We're going to email you the roster and, and your schedule. That's each individual email. So then on Wednesday, um, those new people who have done it overnight on Tuesday, we will then get it to you people on Wednesday by the end of the day. But those will come through email in PDF form. Okay. And and do does every team have a coach and an assistant coach? No. No. Okay. Some only have a coach. And some so have, have an assistant coach right now. Some only have an assistant coach. So, um, but feel free to reach out to us if you're like, hey, like I, you know, could use some extra hands. We can like email out to your team and you can also ask on the first game and say like, hey, I know I'm not going to be here on A, B, and C days. Um, can someone help fill in? Great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, what is your question? Uh, I think I answered. Oh, wait, I messed it up, Ryan. Am I good? <gasps> yes, I can hear you again. I think I have the answer to this one, but is there any mercy role when it comes to the score on ending the game early or switching out the amount of players that you play? We don't keep score. So, that, that's what I figured. I just I answered it that way. <laughs> there's no like technical mercy rule. Now there are going to be times when this doesn't always happen, but sometimes this happens where it's like one team only has like they're like five players short and the other team is fully stacked. 
Now, in that situation, talk with the other coach, see if they're willing to either share some players so that you can both play full teams on the field or say, okay, like we'll play down to your, you know, to your amount of people. Perfect. Thanks. That's what we like to, that's what we like to do. Okay. All right, Daniel Herzog, um, what's up? Yes, um, if if I have a dad that comes to practices regularly or a mom that wants to kind of participate as an unofficial assistant coach, is there a concern with that? Do I need to have them participate in the, the training, you know, watch the sexual, uh, whatever if, the if, child protection if, one? So basically rule of thumb is if someone is helping out as the assistant coach for like 90% of the games and practices, please just have them be the assistant coach and let us send them the training. Let's, you know, let's just do it. If someone is filling in for one day, one game, they don't need to do it. But if they're doing it, you know, even every other time it's like yeah let's have them or if they're just a team parent and they're just bringing snacks and like motivation they don't need to do it yeah okay. perfect thank you so much yeah okay daniel martinez what do you have for us can you hear me no yeah okay awesome um so i i did um i was assistant coach last time last uh, season mm -hmm. and now we find out the code so I, I have a question um so I, I went to the office and changed myself from assistant coach to coach because the other coach moved up to another division okay so I want to make sure uh, or we can I can send an email with the, the information but I want to make sure you know whatever is my situation uh, we have people coaching you know yes um, yeah, for so, sure. If you would send us an email with that information, then we can mm -hmm. double check and make sure we've got it right in our system. Okay, perfect. And awesome. then um, the other question um, kind of uh, was answered. So when we have less players, we, we will ask the other coach if they want to play or they can go down, right? Yeah, so like ask the other, if you have less players, like ask the coach um, if they're willing to play down or even if, if the other coach has like, um a ton of players there then you can ask the other coach like hey you want you know you want to share some players and then some of their players can play on your side of the field so just work with the other coach and see if you can find a solution okay and last question so for the assistant coach um like the other person was uh, asking a minute a minute earlier uh if that person goes quite often then it's not a deadline for the assistant coach background and all that stuff, right? Or, or it should be done by this date. Yeah, so um, they're gonna need to, they need to complete it before games start. And so, um, but mm. the, the sooner the better, as soon as they complete it, they'll get sent a roster and schedule and things like that. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, if anyone has more questions, feel free to raise your hand, feel free to throw it in the chat. It looks like Kev's been on top of the chat. Um, so yeah, um, we will hang out for a few more minutes and then we'll be good to go. might be the fewest questions we've ever had at soccer coaches meeting. I know we must be getting good at this because there's less questions. 
we answer the questions before they needed to get asked. Either that or Kev's just really fast at answering. He is. In the chat. I love the last 26 people just hanging out, seeing somebody have a question. No. <laughs> okay. We're just gonna call it quits at 39 unless someone else has a question. 39 according to my computer. okay well thank you all for coming we appreciate it and uh we appreciate you coaching email us if you have more questions see you later